YouTube. Hi YouTube, how are you guys? Um, there were a couple of updates today in the Losandro case. Um, the 11th person that they were looking for turned himself in with his mom and his lawyer this morning. Um, he did not go into the bodega. He did not participate in the knife attack, machete attack, but he is still being charged with all of the charges like the other uh, Trinitaros gang members because he did participate in the chase. So that's fine, okay? However, I want charges brought against that young lady who told the lie. And I don't know what's taking them so long. If you haven't, um, in my last video, I told you guys about a petition that is on the Lissandro Jr. Guzman Facebook page. Um, I'll check back to see how many signatures they have. And she should be charged. There have been people that have done jail time for conspiracy. They didn't commit the crime, but they were conspiring to, or they were about to, or they were going to. There have been people that have done serious jail time for stuff like that. If a person tells a lie that leads to someone else's murder, what's taking so long for you guys to charge her? I really, really don't understand. It's great that you arrested 11 people and that you're charging 11 people. And I can guarantee that they are going to be found guilty. I don't think a jury in this country would think that um, they were not guilty. I don't know if all of the charges are going to stick to all of them. Um, like the 11th person that turned himself in. I don't know. But to be honest with you, we're talking about brown brown people. They're, they're, they're gone. Okay, they're, they're, they're going to be found guilty. Um, and I don't want to bring race into this, but they're going to be found guilty. That's great. But what about her, who's being protected by the police now? And, and you know, the little spin story. I don't hear the spin story too much um, anymore. I really don't hear this story. To be honest with you, PIX11 is the only one. Channel 11 is a, a news channel in New York City. I really, besides YouTube, social media, and PIX11, I really don't hear too much about the story. And again, you know, I'm hoping that this doesn't just go away as another, you know, young kid who lost his life tragically and we never hear about him again. And the problems still remain in the communities as far as, you know, gangs in the street, um, you know, and, and not fixing these areas. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so many areas in this country that this should be a priority, not just for New York, but what about Chicago? What about for certain areas in LA? What about Detroit? There's so many areas in this country where kids are not safe. We have all seen the story of a child in the house doing their homework and a straight bullet comes through the wall and, and snuffs them out. We have all heard those stories or somebody walking, you know, to the bus stop and they get caught in a, um, a crossfire. There have been kids at the park in the inner cities with their parents and they have been shot and killed. Okay, so this, yes, we're talking about it. A lot of people are aware and... Because of this young man who was slaughtered so viciously before our eyes, you know, a lot more people are talking. And I don't want to say that, you know, that's the good that came from his death because I, I really, I'm struggling to find the good. You know what I mean? Um, I just really don't understand it. And it's very hard to look at pictures of him. There have been people that have posted videos of him, you know, in school, hanging out with his friends, with his family. And just to think he was so full of life, seemed like such a happy person. There's just so many things that, that has not come to light. And I hope they, they're saying they're going to go after them. They're not going to leave any stone unturned. That's what they said. That's what the commission has commissioner has said he's not going to leave any stone unturned but to me there's still so many questions who called him to come outside who 
Was it her? Some people say the girl called him outside and asked him for five dollars. Was she really a member in his explorers uh, club group? Was she really in? And that's how she knew that you know he favored her boyfriend, and that's how she knew to pin it on him. It's just so many, so many unanswered questions. Where are the nine one one tapes from the bodega? He said he called twice. He was on the phone at one time for four minutes. It's just so many questions, and I know we can go over and over it every day, but it's just, it's just so tragic, and it just really, like I said, it affected me. The week of his funeral, I was in a bad mood all week. It really affected me. It's affected sleep. It has just affected me. It, it's consumed me. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to going to see his murals. Again, you know, it's not a happy reason to go to the city. Um, but, um, the murals and the tribute to him and is, I guess for the mother, it has to be hard. You know what I mean? I don't know if she's eventually going to move out of the area. My guess is she's not, you know what I mean? Because that's where, where he last was. And I think she'll feel closer to him, but it has to be hard. And for her to have watched those tapes and she has said she has watched those tapes. Can you imagine? I don't even want to imagine. I have two sons. Um, I don't even want to imagine. So, I mean, it's great that they caught the the 11th person again. But you're charging him with murder. And first of all, maybe because there are tapes of the chase that started behind St. Barnabas Hospital that we have not seen. They're saying he participated in the chase, but he didn't go uh, into the bodega. Okay, so maybe that's why he's being charged. But I think the young lady that told the lie, she needs to be charged. Okay, um, I don't know. I really don't know how she could sleep with herself. I really don't. And I did see a video, guys. It's from a Trinitarist gang member. And they're, they're saying this is not what they're into. The gang was started by the Dominicans in jail. Because they got tired of being mistreated. And they started that gang. But they don't go out. He's saying they don't go out and do those type of things. They would never go out and do those type of things. Um, it's just really crazy. It really, really, really is crazy. All of this started because of something that was posted online. So we really have to talk to our kids. And you really, really have to be careful nowadays. You know, me, my husband was talking he said, if we had kids now, because our kids are in their 20s, they're grown. And he said, if we had kids now having to deal with the internet, you know what I mean? I watch a show on Investigate ID. It's called Web of Lies, and it's people who have been killed from people who they've met online. The internet, although I love it, I love YouTube, okay? I have found so much information on YouTube from things to, to fix around the house, educational things. I mean, I love YouTube. I love it. I can watch YouTube more than uh, cable television. But the, the, uh, the internet is like a gift and a curse. It really is. It really is a gift and a curse. And, you know, a lot of us know about Junior because of the internet. And I just... I don't know. It's just so hard. So we really have to pay attention to our our kids and who they're talking to online and what they're doing online. And um, something's really got to change. Something has really got to change. And, you know, President Trump, he got involved. You know, he had a couple of meetings. And I don't know if it was publicity. I don't know if he truly wants to do something about the gangs. But he did have two meetings on Long Island tying up traffic about the MS-13. I would have expected because he's from New York and this is a very, very high profile case. I've gotten comments from, from people from Canada, from all over the world about this story. What, what are you going to do, President Trump? You know, this was the Bronx. So no, it wasn't by the Trump Towers, but you know, this was the Bronx. But so what? I'm tired of of certain areas just being ignored. You know what I mean? This really of ignored. Not everybody is born with a silver spoon. Not everybody grows up, you know, in the nice neighborhood. 
Some parents are doing the best that they can, living where they can afford to live. No child, I have heard before the Guzman case, and my husband works in the Bronx, and he says, oh, well, this is a nice area of the Bronx, or oh, you don't want to be over there. You know, before this case, you know, I've heard, you know, about things about the Bronx and stuff like that. Why is it, you know, and somebody said, if something happened in the Bronx and people said, we don't allow our kids to go outside. The kids are not allowed to go outside at night. I mean, I remember growing up, I was able to play. We didn't have these fears that our kids these days have. We didn't have it. We didn't have that. And now our kids now... We have to say, oh, no, you can't go over there. Or, no, we're worried about you going outside. And we're worried about... I mean, come on. Being a kid is playing. Being a kid <coughs> free from the stress of life. Not having to worry about bills. <coughs> Excuse me. Work and all that. That's what being a kid is about. And it's sad that in this country, in this country, the land of the free, okay... Um, not everybody's free. Not everybody's free. Not everybody's treated equally. Not every neighborhood is treated equally. Even for me living on Long Island, in my community, we need youth centers. But you go to more prominent areas and they have a, a rec center for the kids. They have things for the kids to do. I don't know. Trump, you want to make America great again? We need to make America safe again. Okay? I understand you want to keep, you know, terrorists out and stuff like that. But there are people being terrorized in their own communities where they live and work every day. Junior, he lived in that neighborhood. He ran in that bodega asking for help and was turned away. And, and even watching that really makes me mad. I seen the video again today, guys. And it really, sorry, I'm sitting in my car. I seen the video again today. He's saying he helped him. As they were dragging him out. And you've guys seen. He was like, somebody peeked their head out while he was being cut with that machete. Horrible. And they have surveillance inside the bodega. So when he was being um, assaulted and butchered outside, if he was on the phone with 911, shouldn't he be on camera with the phone on 911? Where are the damn tapes? Okay. I don't want to ramble, guys, but this is really, really, really upsetting. It really, really is upsetting me. So we got the 11th person arrested. So we need Stephanie arrested. We need her charged, okay? I'm sure they can come up with the crime. I'm sure if you don't want to charge her with murder, I'm sure that there's a crime for what she did, okay? So thank you for watching, and we'll see what happened, guys. Justice for Junior. May he rest in peace.